Hi, everybody. Can you hear me all right? Uh, appreciate your coming out. I, uh, this this uh, press conference um, is extraordinary. Uh, I am not trying to, to do anything other than um, show you what I believe to be the truth in terms of the mathematics of this budget. And before we get to what I have to do on Wednesday, uh, what I want to do to, to prepare uh, and present the uh, House of Representatives with uh, my uh, revenue plan, I want to show you why I have acted the way I have and stood up for what I think is the right thing in, in Pennsylvania uh, in this budget. And overarching everything, of course, are differences of opinion in terms of what we ought to do in terms of funding priorities. Uh, but overarching all of that is the mathematical requirement that we balance this budget. And the premise that, my premise, that we have not been doing that. And it's a bipartisan thing. I'm not trying to assign blame to anybody. Uh, I know this is a partisan place. But I am here to say that this is a problem that every Pennsylvanian has. 12.7 million of us are faced with a problem, and that is if we don't balance our budget after years of not doing it in a bipartisan way, we are going to have serious problems this year and even bigger problems next year. And that's what I want to talk about today, my assumptions and where I'm coming from on balancing the budget. So now I'm going to try to move this forward. And I'm not sure how to do this. <laughs> Up here? Here. Oh. There we go. OK. Now, at first glance, this is the 14-15 budget, right? At first glance, it looks like we ended up in a good place. We have a $274 million ending balance. Uh, and that's, that's on paper. However, the 2014-15 budget relied on over $2 billion of one-time and unsustainable sources. Now, that sounds like something a partisan would say, right? But it's not. The problem is these funds that I'm calling one-time and unsustainable actually don't recur in 2015-16. Um, and I have some quotes here as to, to where we come up with the smoke and mirrors budgeting, but just to break down that $2 billion for last year in that budget, one-time revenues, $899 million. Now, one-time revenues includes $417 million in extraordinary lapses, uh, $75.3 million in the balancing incentive program that's increased uh, federal revenues, uh, the increase of the uh, use of Department of Health AIDS rebates, that's $18 million. And then as sheets, $389 million. Now, just as, use that as an example. You're, you're familiar with the sheets, you know, those things that the treasurer throws out in the newspapers every once in a while to say, you ought to come and claim money that the state owes you because, you know, you had a savings account some time ago that you didn't do anything with. It sort of lapses to the state. Well, that never actually, it's always yours in Pennsylvania law. But we had a, a rule that after five years, after five years, that bank had to give it to the Treasury, and it would sit in the Treasury as cash. It wasn't necessarily ours. We have still owed it to each of us, but it was in the Treasury. Well, they changed that from five years to three years. Well, when you do that, what was five years in, in that bank? Now three years, all of a sudden, you have this big mass of money that gets one time transferred to the Treasury. Still not our money, but it's cash that's in hand, and, and that was one of the things that was used. That's the kind of thing that makes up that $2 billion. Again, one-time revenues, rating special funds like the lottery, uh, one-time cost shifts. Uh, as an example of that is the managed care organizations. Uh, $394 million we decided to pay a month late. You say a month late, that's no big deal. But an extra month, that's some, they have to come up with, with the revenues uh, to, to finance, somehow finance that $394 million. But we, meanwhile, uh, are off the hook for $394 million just this one year, because it just puts it off for a year. But all those things added up to $2 billion last year. And again, I have the quotes. It's just not me. This is the rating agencies. You, the reporters, have been uh, acknowledging this. So, if you did a, uh, a, a budget that was not smoke and mirrors, you'd start with the idea of uh, a, um, a cost to carry, something that said, okay, here's what we actually spent last year, and this is what they mandated in terms of all these smoke and mirrors pushing, kicking the can down the road. So 
what do we actually have to, to raise this year to spend what we have to spend before Tom Wolf puts anything in for education or Act 89 puts anything in for roads and bridges? Well, here's, here's what we are, we have. Uh, human services, $886 million. Again, start with the total spending that we did last year, $29.153 billion. Then you have mandated increases. Human services, $886 million. Now, you know, part of that uh, is $400 million that was shifted from last year to this year. So that $886 million is $400 million higher than it should be because we used that one-time shift of the managed care organizations, for example. We still owe it, but we put to this year payment that we should have made last year. So we basically doubled up this year. And unless we do more smoke and mirrors and kick that can down the road one more time, we owe it this year. So it's now not $400 million, but $886 million. Pension, $715 million. We did a smoke and mirrors thing there. Also, we took about, what, 200 and some million dollars out of the, uh, the uh, tobacco settlement fund. You know, we just took it out. I, I don't know what, why we did that. I mean, it's, there's no good financial reason to do it, except to say it made the 2014-15 budget a little less. It was part of that $2 billion of shifts. But it makes the 2015-16 budget even, even higher. Uh, debt service, well, that's what you owe. Uh, you know, you, you, you make your interest payments, that's what you have to do, and, and the amount of money you have borrowed, we had to borrow some extra money last year just to keep the lights on, you'll recall. So there's 53 million there. Corrections, uh, that is, uh, even with no increase in the prison population, you're going to have to pay uh, prison guards. Um, so that's $203 million. And then the other category, some miscellaneous things, $23 million. That adds up to $31 billion. $33 million. If I added nothing in my budget, if I wanted to fund nothing in education, we didn't want to do anything with anything to increase, uh, we would have, because of this buildup, this compounding of one-year fixes and shifts, $31 billion, $33 million. This is what we have to spend that's just mandated. Now, the 15-16 Republican budget, again, this is the one, 1192 is the number, you all recall. Um, the IFO revenue estimate, that's the Independent Fiscal Office, they, their estimate was for 1516 would be about $29,755,000,000. The total mandated expenditures, remember, 31,033,000,000, that's where that number comes from. That leads to what I'm calling, just for 1516, a structural budget deficit of $1,278,000,000, almost $1.3 billion. And you're wondering why I'm complaining. That's a $1.3 billion structural budget deficit just in 2015-16. I haven't even gotten to 1617 yet. But in that, to balance the budget, to get to that $1.3 billion and add a little bit for some extra spending that they wanted to put into 1192, they basically came up with $1.5 billion of one-time stuff. It's not honest. What did they come up with? One-time revenues of $520 million. They came up with one-time cost shifts of $560, almost $4 million, and questionable savings of $424 million. Now, what you might ask are in those things. Okay, the one-time revenues, there was a budget surplus carried over from 2014-15 of what well, we said, 274 million, they say 300 million dollars. Well, you know, I think I, there really wasn't a budget surplus, but okay, they said there was. The liquor system revenue. I've been in business all my life. You don't sell a business, and I've been in businesses that you sell, you don't sell a business uh, in one week or one month, unless you have some crony who's standing there to, to take over that business. And so your upfront money, the money that you're going to get from doing this, and I proposed, as you remember, a compromise that was extraordinary for a, a, a Democrat to, to propose, uh, we would get a lot of money, but we wouldn't get much, in, if anything, in year one. It takes some time to do this. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure where that comes from. One-time cost shifts, uh, authority rentals and sinking fund, that's called plan con. They were just going to put off about $300 million that we owe the state owes to school districts for buildings that have sometimes cases actually been built, they just weren't going to pay it. Guess you can do that, but that's 300 million that isn't going to be in the 2015-16 expenditure. 
We just decided we're not going to pay it. Uh, have you ever done that to your landlord? <laughs> Mark? <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> he was my uh, tenant. Uh, if you actually do something like that, you're going to end up having to pay it. And usually your landlord is going to give you some kind of grief for, for putting it off. Well, this is what we're doing because we can. Child welfare payments. You've heard how human service agencies are, are complaining legitimately about the pain and hardship that this budget impasse has caused. In the Republican budget, they were going to take $172 million of child welfare payments and just put off paying it, taking the last quarter for 2014-15, or 15-16, in their budget and putting it off till the 16-17 year. Again, that's $170 million. You're going to have to pay. It's going to be in next year's budget. They just took it out of this year's budget, so voila, I mean, amazing, magic. It's not in the 15-16 budget. It's not an expenditure we make, which is true, but we have to pay it the year after that. School employees, Social Security, same thing. $87 million, put that off. Uh, don't pay this year's on time. Let it drift into the next fiscal year, into the 16-17 fiscal year. So as far as the 15-16 budget is concerned, it's not an expenditure. And then you have questionable savings. Uh, costs and revenue adjustments of $237 million uh, and the failure to fund manage, a managed care program of $187 million. I got to say, I wish I could explain where they came from. I don't understand it. So that last $424 million just is uh, savings that just comes out of thin air. Uh, so if you did an honest budget for 1617 and said, okay, what are the real cost drivers? Forget about what we had in 1192. Uh, you'd actually have to start with the things that were shifted from 1415 to 1617 and acknowledge that that, that $1.5 billion actually had to be paid. So the human services, it's $654 million. Again, that's before you, I add anything, before anybody says, I want to do something different. Pensions, $458 million. You have to put that in. Uh, debt service is now $78 million. That's just what it is. Corrections, $166 million, uh, $1 million, and others, $147. That's $1.5 billion. That means the mandated spending, before I put anything in, for anything I want or anybody else wants who supports me, it's 30, is $32,536,000,000. Million. So the 2016-17 budget, uh, with revenues of $30,247,000,000 and mandated expenditures, again, with what I just said back here, $32,536,000,000, leads to a structural budget deficit in the 16-17 budget, assuming that you know, we do what, what was proposed in 1192 of 2.2, almost $2.3 billion. Uh, and that's assuming that the budget for 15-16, this is the six, I'm sorry, this is the 16-17 budget, assuming that the 15-16 budget was, was actually balanced. We'd have a $2.3 billion. Now that's making the big assumption that $1.5 billion in the 15-16 budget was balanced, which it is not. We'd still have a $2.3 billion deficit with, uh, if we were looking ahead. That's, that's where we are. So let's take some, you know, pensions, one of the things that I think uh, the other side has talked about is how we have to take pensions seriously. I agree with that. And I proposed a pension reform, but theirs, neither theirs nor mine actually does anything in year one or two, 15, 16, or 16, 17. Uh, theirs, if you just took Senate Bill S1, as it was originally proposed, it would only take care of about 2%, uh, $44 million uh, would reduce expenditures in year one of, of, the, uh, of the budget. So it really doesn't, doesn't do a whole lot. So here's, the, here's my point, and, and this is why I've been such a stickler about this. The, the math just doesn't work. And I think all of us, Pennsylvania, all of us in this room, we have to understand that set partisanship aside, I'm not assigning blame here, I'm just saying this is where we are. If we don't do anything, if we don't figure out how to make the uncomfortable choice of having revenues that are real, of being honest in our budget, we're going to have next year to come up with somewhere between two and three and a half billion dollars of cuts. That means most of that has to come out of human services or education. I mean, you can go into each of the departments, but there's just not enough money outside of Department of Human Services and Education to find 
billions of dollars. And you're going to have to make cuts the likes of which we have not made for a long time, 10 years, in fact, when it comes to education. You're going to have increased property taxes. The same thing is going to happen here that happened back in 2011 when a billion dollars was cut from uh, education, K through 12. Um, and we're going to have additional credit downgrades because the uh, credit agencies are going to say, well, you're still using smoke and mirrors, so that 83 basis point premium you're now paying on your debt because you're not a AAA rated state, it's going to go up even higher. And so is our debt because we're going to have to borrow money to fund our deficit. So that's the problem. Uh, doing nothing now is going to result in a huge cut for education. I think that probably is, the, is, is a, a key element here. And if people didn't like what they saw four or five years ago, they're going to hate next year. Because we simply have come to the end of the line using these one-time fixes. Funds are empty. Uh, we've used smoke and mirrors enough. And, and the compounding effect of expenditure increases is just getting higher and higher. Each year, the increases get higher and higher because we have put off spending in the year we should have spent it to the, f to the next year, and those bills are coming due. Just in education, though, if we, if we really cut what we're going to have to cut next year if we don't find the revenues this year, a uh, billion dollars, that's going to take education funding to the lowest level since 2005, 2006. That's a 10-year, you have to go back 10 years to get to the, the level of, uh, of those cuts. So that's my story. And, and that's why I'm taking this budget cycle so seriously. We have got to get it right this year. And it's not a matter of, of electives sort of saying, you know, geez, uh, you're, you're a, a tax and spend person. No, I'm a business person. I'm a person who actually wants to make my ends meet. I want to have a balanced budget. And we could argue all the time, and we should. This is what a democracy is. Uh, and I'm all for that, debating what we should spend money on and how much we should raise. But I don't think it's a partisan thing to, to, to want to say, insist on a discipline that says we have to be honest about our budgeting. The math has to actually work. Two plus two does equal four in the real world. It has to equal four here in budgeting in Harrisburg. And we can't keep doing what we've been doing. And again, it's a bipartisan thing. I'm not uh, blaming any one group. But you know, it's one thing to say we're not raising taxes. Uh, and we're, we're going to cut expenditures, but then we need to do it honestly. This is the way we've been doing it is not at all honest, and we've got to stop it. That's what my intransigence has been about. It's not about ideology. It's about math. <laughs>